from beautiful North Hollywood, California, it's Flashback Tonight, starring Delius. Tonight, from Blossom and the Parkers, Jenna Bonoy. She played Six Lemure on Blossom, and she went on to play Stevie on the Parkers. Having two long-running series in Hollywood is definitely a difficult task. Put your hands together for the one, the only, Jenna Von Oy. <laughs> Wow, it's been a while since I've heard that song. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> Jenna, you have some amazing fans. They love you out here. <laughs> but no one loves you more than a certain demographic of men. <laughs> the black man. <laughs> black men love Jenna Von Oy. Why do you think that is, Jenna? Oh gosh, I don't know. Could it, it could be a certain asset that I might have. Asset? <laughs> or did have. You apparently. were like the original Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> but yours is real. <laughs> Too soon? No comment. No Too comment. Soon? Yeah. No, there, actually there was a rumor at one point that you were like an ass model, is that true? This is, okay, so I don't, I guess Rolling Stone at some point printed something that said I was an ass model. First of all, I have no idea what that is. So, I, this is, somebody needs to explain this to me. That's I'm a, sure I can guess. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, but no, no, that's not the case. I did um, do a couple spreads for King Magazine and some things like that. I was clothed, people, I was clothed. Well. <laughs> Barely, but yeah. I was clothed. Um, Which we're gonna put up now that you mentioned that. Oh, great, in post. Thanks, good, excellent. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm sure my children will love to see uh, that. There we go again. Yeah. <laughs> the children, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Listen, I, I'm very proud of it. I, I feel I, I'm very flattered by the attention that it has garnered over the years. And uh, I don't know that after having two children that my you know body is quite the same as it was. So someday when I'm like 90, I'm going to be showing those photos to all the men on the shuffleboard court, I imagine, and, and saying, look what I used to look like in my 20s. How cool is that? Um, so yeah, I'm very proud of it. It's just, you know, in the meantime, uh, someday when my children hear about that, I, I don't exactly know how I'm going to cover that uh, conversation. How to, how to cover it. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. That's right. one conversation I am not looking forward to. Blossom. Let's talk yes. about Blossom real yeah. quick. Now, how old were you when you got that role? Yes. Thank you. Um, I was actually, I was 12 when wow. I got that. Yeah. And, and what was the audition? Had you auditioned for much before, before you landed that role, or was that your...? I started acting when I was six years old. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I booked Blossom out of New York. I'm from Connecticut originally, and mm -hmm. was going back and forth to the city for, uh, for auditions daily. Mm -hmm. uh, my poor parents, God bless them, for, for going through all of that, because it was completely my idea and not theirs. Right. And, uh, and um, yeah, I was a very interesting child. <laughs> uh, very unique. Um, but yeah, so they, they uh, indulged me, and lo and behold, I booked Blossom out of New York, and it moved me to Los Angeles, and, and the rest is, is television Did the history. whole family move to Los Angeles, or? At first, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and then we actually were going back and forth to the East Coast a lot. I'm the oldest of four kids, and so mm -hmm. my parents didn't really want to uproot everyone just because I was, was working. Um, so yeah. When was the last time you saw uh, Maya and Joey? Whoa! Uh, well done, very well done. Yeah, Whoa, awesome. very well Because I've never heard that before. Nobody's <laughs> ever, ever stopped me and done that, ever. See, another first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I, I see Mayim as often as possible. We, we talk often. Oh, cool. Uh, and I, yeah, I think motherhood has kind of been like the great equalizer for us. We, we have so much in common now that, that we're both moms, and so we, we've kind of had a good time going back and forth. She's been incredibly helpful for me in, in the motherhood journey. Uh, that's good, because you know, sometimes you hear about people on TV shows and they're cast members and they play like a family member, but like when they yell cut, they're like trying to stab each other sort of thing, <laughs> you know? So it's good to hear that you guys still keep in touch after all these years. I had breakfast with Ted Wass this morning, as a matter of that's fact. That's the so, father, yeah, right? We, we, yeah, so we keep in touch. We definitely keep in touch. Oh, that's yeah. amazing, yeah. amazing. So you went from Blossom, mm -hmm. and then you land, how long did Blossom run for? Five years. Five years, it was yeah. one of the most powerful hours on NBC. Thank you. Yes, it was. And then you went and you got another role. You booked another long-running 
I guess, rolled on the Parkers. Yes. As Stevie, what was Stevie's last name? Did she have one? Van Lowe. Stevie Van Lowe. Yes. Stevie, Stevie Van Lowe. On the People Parkers. seem to like to get, because of Von Oy, I think, they seem to like to give me a double last name. So uh, Lemure, Van Lowe. Sort of, yeah, you're always like uh, ethnic and French or something, whatever you, do, you know. I don't know. It's Who like knows? something where you with look. With a booty. I mean, with no. a booty. Whatever, yeah. Whatever works. <laughs> whatever works. Yeah. So tell us about uh, of, of the Parkers. So you were on there with the Monique. Monique, as we all know, went on to win an Oscar in a movie called Precious. Yeah. And then yeah. she also went on, yeah, give it up for Monique. She also went on to say that she had been blacklisted from Hollywood yeah. for diva like behaviors. Did you see any behaviors like that on the oh, set? Oh, no. Mm. <laughs> Jenna. Far from it. No, no, Nothing. no. And you, okay, you know that it, I would not lie to you. It just came out of nowhere? I, I mean, here's the thing. I'm sure that there's, I, I feel like there's probably truth to every, a little bit of truth to every story, right? Yeah. I don't necessarily think that her behavior was diva-like per se. I, I, from my understanding, she didn't want to kind of go out and be a part of the fanfare that is promoting yourself for the oh, Oscars yes. uh -huh. because she believed that it should be about the work. talent and the, the body of work. And I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Um, but please don't black me Hollywood, please, right. for saying that. <laughs> but you know, but I know, but I've got it, but I've got to support somebody that was really good to me for yes. five and a half years. And I, yes. I will stand behind Monique all the way because I know her heart yeah. and she knows mine and, and in her heart is not diva-like behavior. And right. I know that. So, that's nice. You know, to me, that's the important thing. That's amazing. The rest of it, I don't know about, but okay. that I do know. Well, yeah. I believe you, because yeah. I know you, so I believe you. Now, you used to live in L.A. Mm -hmm. You've left L.A. for the country swagger of Nashville, <laughs> Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. How was that different? How are you adjusting? How is it different? Oh, my. How can I count the ways? Um, the, I've, I left L.A. initially because I just I wanted to put a little grass back under my feet and, uh -huh. you know, maybe get away from some mudslides and smog and rampant narcissism and all those good things. Motorcycles. Uh, right. Motorcycles, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really, I had been going back and forth to Nashville working on music and collaborating with songwriters out there and uh, I really was enamored with the town and I loved the idea that I could collaborate with songwriters who had top songs on the radio. It, I mean, what a cool thing mm -hmm. to, to be some random actress girl in LA and, and be able to go out and sit in a room with somebody and be taken seriously yeah. and, and be given respect yeah. uh, from a musical standpoint. And uh, they weren't, you know, putting me up on some sort of warped pedestal because I had been on a television show. They were honestly giving me a chance to prove that I could yeah. or couldn't write music. And, mm -hmm. and when I proved that, uh, that it was in my heart and in my soul, I, I think uh, I was really welcomed with open arms and I appreciated that. Yeah. Well, you're like a woman of like many talents though. Cause you, I try. You not only do you do like your uh, music and acting, but you're also an accomplished author, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> She's an accomplished author who's written two books so far and a blog for People Magazine. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, it started out as, as a blog for People Magazine. Uh -huh. um, they asked me when I was pregnant with my first daughter, Gray, uh -huh. they asked if I would write a blog about my pregnancy experiences. And um, I have a tendency to be slightly snarky and sarcastic. I don't know if, uh, if any of you can see that. I can see that, yeah. But, um, and I think they liked that. Uh -huh. I mean, because that speaks to everybody, right? Uh -huh. Snark. <laughs> uh, and, and so they asked if I would write a monthly blog. And, and that segued into my own blog called The Cradle Chronicles, and then that segued into a publisher saying, hey, how about a, how about a full-length book? And I said, what, people, people want to read a 400 pages of me, like, talking and being so, oh, sure. And that brings Done. you to Situation Momity, yep. her new book. Tell us about what you put in this book. <laughs> so yeah, I think the title probably tells everything, but um, it's, uh, it's Situation Momity is a, a first-time mom's guide to pregnancy in year one and laughing your way through, and I, I wrote it to try and empower women to trust their own instincts and not mm -hmm. read everything about their pregnancy on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, or in a book written by somebody who has two kids. Um, <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I, there, I'm not the first or last uh, mom out there and, uh, and I'm sure that I've got nothing new to say, but if I can encourage one woman to sort of stand in the, the face of parenting challenges because there are many. It's mm. not all perfect. I, there are days I want to stick a fork in my eye, I'll admit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, but I love my kids with such a passion. Yeah. And I, so it's cool to kind of merge the comedy and my passion for my kids and, and have a little throwback to the sitcom days. Yeah. And, and I tell all kinds of crazy stories where I throw myself under the bus from, from the Blossom days and the Parker's days uh -huh. and, and even uh, 
before that. So, yeah. What what didn't you know about motherhood before you had yeah, your first everything. child? Well, what's the one thing <laughs> you know? People tell you things. What's the one thing you wish somebody would have told you? To let myself off the hook. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like um, there is this really innate sense of um, pressure that we put on ourselves as as moms, just because you know raising a kid is is a very big responsibility, but it's also this really beautiful, wonderful, terrifying sometimes thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like the idea that now, looking back a little bit, not that I can do this, succeed in doing this every day, some mm -hmm. mornings I wake up and I still put too much pressure on myself, but I, I like that there's the ability to sort of throw a little sense of humor on it and remind myself that, that at the end of the day, the most important thing is that I'm loving my children through all of it. That's amazing. That's amazing.